If you're looking to start your own tech review channel like this one, but you don't have any equipment, then this video will help you get started. Most people who start off their social media journeys believe that they have to have the best of the best equipment before they can make any progress. And that simply isn't true. It's the 21st century, baby. You barely need a cell phone to go viral. This clip was taken on what looks like a Nokia 3310 and totally went viral. Okay. And the quality is junk. Lol. So let me walk you through the equipment I currently use and what you will need to get started. There are three levels to play at when it comes to making videos. Level one is Team Cell Phone. Level two is Team Travel Vlog Kit. And level three, the serious guys, are Team Small Rig. Mounting everything they can onto a camera for increased quality, but we know it's just for show. <laughs> for those of you who are new, welcome to my tech review channel. We do tech. It's a simple name, I know. Top tip, keep the message in your name as clear as possible. We do tech. As simple as that. We help you avoid wasting money on junk products. So before I give away all my channel building secrets, I'd like for you to know why my words mean anything and why you can totally use my advice to grow your channel exponentially too. Currently, this tech review channel, We Do Tech, has 90,000 subscribers. However, I've built up quite the audience over the last few years. I have two TikTok channels, my tech review channel, which is on 85,000 followers, and my personal TikTok channel that is on 377,000 followers. My personal Instagram is on 112,000 followers, and I've also built a meme page that is on 140,000 followers. So I think it's safe to say that I've been around for a while and I know a thing or two about social media. What most YouTubers want you to believe is that you'll need a lot of equipment to get started, but the truth is, most people only need their phones. I even still use my phone for some shots. That's right. With a small amount of accessories, you can kit your phone out to look like a content creation beast. Slap a rig on it, mount your mic and light, and you're ready to go. I use a lot of different cameras based on what mood I'm in. Sometimes I'm in team overkill mood. I want to play with my Sony a7 Mark IV, mount the mics and handle and ND filter and go all out. But most of the time, this setup is way too heavy. I can't take that beast into public with me. So that's where I think a camera like the Fuji XS20 fits in perfectly. It has all the right camera capabilities, even competing with cameras like my Sony a7 Mark IV without the bulk. We took it out for a spin at Comic-Con Africa last weekend and I was thoroughly impressed. It is a 26 megapixel camera that can record up to 6.2K at 30 FPS when shooting in full frame or 4K60 with 10-bit color, which is insane for a camera body this small. It even has a pop-up flash. That's out of the norm for cameras that operate on this level. That's a pretty cool feature that might come in handy for those clutch on-the-go situations. Basically, all tech companies these days are forced to go all in. We as consumers force their hands into doing so. So whether you record video on iPhone or super big heavy A7 Mark IV kits or a simple vlog style camera, the quality of your video should be more than decent enough for getting started. Audio will be your biggest challenge after establishing video quality. Yes, you want stable footage, so software stabilization will take care of that for the most part. Or you can look at a camera like the XS20 that has built-in image stabilization. And yes, you do want as much dynamic range as possible for the on-the-go footage where your light changes a lot. So the ability to shoot in log like you can with the XS20 and the A7 Mark IV gives you the upper hand when recording in places with unpredictable lighting. But for most tech reviewers, you will be in full control of the light anyways. For the cheapest lighting solution, you can just set up your review station next to a window or you can pick up a cheap pair of panel lights. You really don't need a big soft box. Simply turn the panels towards the wall and let the light bounce softly back onto you. It's little tricks like these that you will only learn when starting with as little equipment as possible. For example, when it comes to audio, the latest phones have incredible AI technology, which makes you sound good in almost all situations. And when that doesn't do the trick, head over to Adobe Podcast Software and run the audio through Audio AI. Voila, podcast quality audio through your phone. Now, of course, if you want to stand far away from your phone and still record audio, I can highly recommend these DJI wireless mics. They come in their own little charging case and hooks up directly to your phone. I used to use the Rode Wireless Go 2s. I love them, but both of their batteries gave up only one year after I bought them. And I've seen this happen to quite a bunch of people online, so I'm not quite sure what's happening behind the scenes with quality control at the Rode Wireless Go factories. But anyways, shotgun mics also work great. Pop one of these onto your camera and you have super crisp directional audio ready to go. 
These mics are designed to block out all side noise and only record the audio coming from in front of them. Whereas these wireless mics and built-in mics are more omnidirectional and picks up on all sorts of side noises. Another thing I always hear people speak about when they say they have a bunch of constraints to starting to make their own content is battery life. They say their devices just can't handle the amount of footage they need to take. But this really isn't a big constraint. All you need is a battery pack. Even the Fuji XS20 has USB charging, so you'll be fine. And by the way, in the description below, I've compiled a list of the cheapest and best products to use when you're starting out with your YouTube channel. Feel free to check them out. Yes, there are affiliate links, so it helps me out if you buy from those links. However, I really hope you succeed in your journey. Let's continue the video. Quality content is very important. Many devices like the XS20 has such high resolution sensors these days that you don't even have to worry whether you're recording vertically or horizontally anymore. We all know short form vertical videos are all the hype at the moment. So with sensors capable of 6.2K footage, you can simply always record horizontally and just crop for vertical. My honest biggest tip for getting started is just get started. I know it sounds crazy, but you shouldn't have tons of equipment when you get started. To become super good at content creation, you need to match your skill level with your equipment level. As your skills improve, your equipment can improve. It's good to not have all the equipment when you start out. It forces you to learn how everything works. And after spending hundreds of thousands on equipment, my best advice is save up for the newest iPhone, get a pair of wireless mics, and that's all you'll need. Now I know all the camera fanatics out there will probably be coming at me in the comment sections. That is good. Maybe there's something I'm not thinking about and I'd love to have your opinion. Perhaps professional cameras are still relevant for content creators. However, I just don't think so. But anyways, hey, this was Stefan at WeRuTech doing the research so you don't have to.